Kevin Malone is a simple man. He enjoys the small things in life. Chili, playing in a police tribute band, the number 69, and is generally considered a crude, straightforward guy. So how is it by the end of the series that Kevin is able to buy a bar? Could he have been stealing money from the office the entire time? Successfully pulling off embezzlement is something that is incredibly hard to do. For a man like Kevin, it would seem to be nearly impossible. Or at least that's what he wants everyone to think. Several times throughout the series, Kevin is shown to be much smarter than he lets on. For instance, while Oscar is typically seen as the smartest of the accountants, he directly loses to Kevin and Bar Trivia. This 2001 masterpiece from Gilles Paquet Brenner explores the intricate dynamics of a family in disarray. Titre du film et la scaphandre et le papillon. Yes. I'm sorry, no. Over to the Einsteins. May Jolie's chose it. We can also look to the webisodes for more insight. In one of the episodes, Kevin directly states that he has an IQ of over 100. In another webisode, we find that Angela, not Kevin, has made an accounting error that led to the misplacement of several thousand dollars. This all seems to indicate that Kevin isn't exactly the bumbling idiot that he seems to be. We'll also need to discuss motive. Throughout the televised series, Kevin has never really seen hurting for money in any way. But if you look close at the series, you can see a different pattern start to form. But then the Pistons beat the Cavs, and so now I'm returning it all back. Go Pistons. I won the 2002 $2,500 No Limit Deuce to Seven Draw Tournament at the World Series of Poker in Vegas. So, yeah, I'm pretty good at poker. Kevin is a very avid gambler. He plays poker, bets on sports, and at one point undertakes a significant amount of gambling debt. In fact, there's a whole string of webisodes centered around this. Eventually, Kevin even fails to take a loan on two separate occasions. So if he's unable to take a loan, how is he able to buy a bar in the future? But the most important part we need to discuss is whether or not there are any clear-cut examples of Kevin flat out stealing from the office. And strangely enough, we have more than one. Looking to the office webisodes again, we see that Kevin has taken nearly $3,000 from the office petty cash fund and gambled it. $2,800 returned to petty cash. Angela. I forgot to sign in the money. Okay. That's gotta be it. Yeah. Oops. Um, I took that. This amount is well above what is typically considered petty and is actually a felony. Kevin also mentions to Roy how exactly to steal the petty cash, including where Oscar hides the key and where exactly the funds are. You would have to take some from petty cash. Well, I don't even know where that is. In Oscar's drawer. Well, isn't it locked? Well, he keeps the key behind his computer. Ah, Kevin, why are you giving him instructions on how to steal? And another time we see Kevin hinting that he's most likely involved in insider trading. I had Martin explain to me three times what he got arrested for because it sounds an awful lot like what I do here every day. The point of all this being that Kevin isn't afraid to break the law, especially if it seems like it'll make him some money. So for Kevin to go from being basically broke and needing a loan in order to pay off gambling debts to purchasing a bar, he would need to embezzle some serious cash from Dunder Mifflin. Kevin, being one of three accountants at the office, also has the ability to skim money out of the office all while hiding it in the books. We see Kevin routinely fudging the numbers with what is eventually referred to as Clevin. I keep seeing this symbol in the accounts from last year. It's, it's all over the place. I don't know what it means. That's the reason Kevin got fired. It's his magic number he used to use it to balance his accounts. He used to call it a Kalevin. He told Dwight, a mistake plus Kalevin gets you home by seven. He was home by 4.45 that day. Eventually, Dwight takes over as manager and fires Kevin for exploiting the Kalevin glitch. It was nothing personal. It's just that you were terrible at your job. The Kalevin isn't just a way for a lazy employee to get out of work and balance the books. It's a way for an incredibly smart and cunning employee to rip off a company for years, all while playing the facade of being an idiot. Thanks to the Kalevin, Kevin is able to go from needing to take out a loan to cover his gambling debts to owning a functioning bar. Considering that earlier we talked about how Kevin was unable to get a loan on two separate occasions, the only possible way this would have happened would be for Kevin to be stealing money discreetly over his last few years at Dunder Mifflin. Anyways, this has been 10K Bill. Thanks for checking out our videos. Make sure you like and subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.